license actions that you'll normally be putting in place. Before I get into that in detail, let me also just point out that QuickBooks for some time, the online program had been really testing out, I would call it A-B testing, two pretty different web page styles, that being the accounting view and the business view. So if I go to this cog drop down up top, you could see that you have this switch down here to the business view. So if I switch to the business view, you can kind of see some change on this left hand panel. So if I click on this, then you've got some change over here. Now that change is not anywhere near as extreme as it has been before, because I think they were experimenting with using less accounting style language and more kind of uh, just, uh, just casual, very casual type of language was the idea. And they used more symbol, symbols and whatnot. But it looks to me like the accountant view is winning on the A-B testing because that seems to be the default view. And they've kind of removed a lot of the, the look that they were doing with the business view, which I think is, is probably the best way because, because you know, you were using standard accounting terminology more often. It looks a little bit more professional and, and whatnot. But in any case, that seems to be what their current decision is. And we know that with QuickBooks Online, they're going to change stuff and we just roll with it. That's why we update the course uh, often so that we have the latest look and feel on it. So you can see what's actually <laughs> what's what's happening in the current time frame. All right. So then if I'm doing the day to day input, it's going to be this information. Now, if you have an accounting background, you might be used to thinking about everything in terms of journal entries, everything's debits and credits to build the financial statements. If you don't have, have a formal accounting background, then you might not see it that way. You might just see everything with the data input forms. But in either case, remember that with QuickBooks, all recurring transactions, those re transactions that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, we want to have a form for typically the form is the thing that will record the transaction, the journal entry. And that's really important because the forms will do more than just record the journal entry. They'll also make the bookkeeping process, the flow of the forms flow more smoothly uh, in, in the system. So everything that has a normal cycle will have these forms attached to it. And most of them will be in this drop down and they'll be categorized with the customers, which I would call accounts receivable or revenue cycle, vendors, expenses cycle, payable cycles, employees, payroll cycle, and then the other stuff that doesn't fit in a particular type of cycle. We'll get into this in a lot more detail later, but for now, let me just emphasize this point because it's really important to understand the navigation. We can be a little bit overwhelmed with all the different things. This is a flow chart. This is on the desktop version. We're using the online version, but note that the flow of the forms is basically the same for any type of accounting system and the desktop version has this nice flow chart. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. So if we have the, the customer cycle or the sales cycle, uh, when we have a sale, if it was a sale for, and we didn't get paid yet, then we're going to use an invoice, right? That's going to be the form that we will typically put in place to record the journal entry. And then the invoice will be connected to what we call a payment or receive payment type of form when we actually get paid on the invoice, decreasing the accounts uh, receivable and recording the, the cash possibly in, in the checking account or maybe into an undeposited funds account or funds to be deposited and then we can actually make the deposit. So these, because these are normal transactions, invoices, receive payments, we have a form specifically designed for them and we wanna make sure to use those forms. If we make a sale at a cash register, we have like a sales receipt type of form that is gonna record the receipt of the, of the payment and the revenue at the same point in time. On the vendor side, we have checks that we can enter or expense forms for the QuickBooks Online. When we pay for things uh, that are gonna be normal types of transactions for the cash outflow. And then if we have accrual type of systems, we have bills which are gonna be increased in the accounts payable. The point is that any normal transaction uh, is gonna have a bill. Normal meaning it happened, it ha have a bill. It will have a form to it, meaning any transaction that happens quite often will have a form uh, that's going to be connected to it. Some transactions 
aren't happening all the time, such as the purchase of equipment that we fully finance. For example, we take out a loan to finance a new piece of equipment. That doesn't happen all the time, so we don't have a form that's designated to that particular transaction. So you can see the same categories here. So if I look at here, we have the customers, and then we have the forms that are related to the customers, invoices, a receipt payment, estimate, credit memo, sales receipt. We'll talk about each of these forms in more detail later. And then the vendor cycle, you can think about this as ultimately a cash outflow. We're paying for stuff for the business, expense forms, checks forms, bills, pay bills, and so on. Employee cycle, this will be dependent upon whether or not you're doing your payroll or have payroll. If you do have payroll, are you doing it within QuickBooks or do you have a third party provider helping you with it? Employees, single time active, and then other, these are things that don't fit neatly into any of the other cycles, such as deposits, which you would think fits pretty neatly under the revenue cycle or customers, but we could have deposits from other things. So they kind of put it over here. Transfers, money transfers from, from accounts, like a checking account to a savings account, journal entry. This is the form that you don't want to use for all of these normal transactions. You want to use the form and then if there is no form to use, such as that purchase of equipment for, uh, for a loan, then maybe you go to the journal entry, but it should be the last, last thing to, to be using in a normal system. And then statements, uh, inventory, quantity, and we'll talk more about the rest of those later. Now the bookmarks up top, this is where you can put some of your saved items. You got your little pencil here. So this is a newer kind of feature and you can select any of the things that you go to often and add them into your bookmarked area. So that could be a great tool. Uh, if, if you wanna get to certain things faster, I'm not gonna use it because I think their layout one is pretty good. And two, I wanna use the universal layout so that people understand where we're going. One of the problems, by the way, of having a really customized layout is that it works great for you, but if you're trying to explain to someone else what you're doing, you, you can't really do it because their layout's gonna look totally different than your layout because you've totally customized uh, your layout. So there's kind of pros and cons to, to getting over the top with these. But if you, used, if you use some things that are a little bit hard to find, I think that could be a really useful tool. You also have the ability to customize the menu here as well. So then on the left-hand side, if you remember with the desktop version, I'll just I'll just remind you if, if anybody with the desktop version